Pati Puta Atras Rupam Rupam Tasyagrajaburi Puri Maturi Gohoshvati Ralha Kunda Magiri Varam Ahurad Kamar Vasam Prapto Yes Pratita Kripaya Sri Guru Tamnatosmi Gurave Kaura Chandraya Radhika Itadali Krishna Krishna Bhaktai Tad Bhaktaya Namonama Ananda Lila Maya Vikrahai He Mabadya Vyatsa Chavi Sundarai Tasmai Mahaprema Chaitanya Chandraya Namonama Chaitanya Chandraya Namonamaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namonamaste Bhaktya Vinda Aparada Lakshmi Chilpas Tukamadi Tarakamati Kripa Mahitam Sharanam Prapada Vrinti Namaste Chalandara Smaraha Sumurali Manohara Radhika Rasikamama Kripanithe Supreme King Kurim Kuru Tavevasmi Tavevasmi Najivami Tayabana Iti Vikaya Devi Tam Nama Charantikam First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, Asmadeya Parmarada Tam Guru Pada Padma, Anitilila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pad, Ashto Tarasatusi Rupanuga Chari Varya Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the Sambhu Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis Vancha By the Kosa's mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga, today we are celebrating the divine Tirubhav Titi, the Disappearance Festival, Viraha Mahotsav, festival of separation from the lotus feet of our most dear Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarvati Thakur. In Vaishnav Tantra, it is said, na karma bandhanam jangma vaishnavanam navitritam. A pure Vaishnava 
has no birth and no death, they have no bondage of karma, they are not forced to appear in this world and undergo the reactions of their misdeeds, but rather, just as Sri Krishna appears in this world, Janma Karma Chame Dibhyam Evam Yoveti Tatsutaha Sri Krishna's appearance and all his activities and disappearance from this world. They're all Dibhya, transcendental. So in the same way, Mahatmanas Tumam Partha Daivim Prakritim Asritaha The pure Vaishnavas, they're not under the control of the Maya Shakti, the Bahiranga Shakti, external energy. They are Naivim Prakritim Asritaha All their divine activities are the play of Sri Krishna's internal potency, Swarup Shakti, Bhakti Shakti. So, Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Stanswar Thakur, he is the very powerful manifestation of Guru Tattva. The Akanda Guru Tattva, original Guru Tattva, is Sri Nityananda Prabhu, or Baladev Prabhu. In regard to Nityananda Prabhu, Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pai, he has said, Prema Pracharana Ara Pashanda Dalan Duikarya Avadute Karina Brahman. The Avadut, Nityananda Prabhu, was wandering from place to place, country to country, performing two karya, two duties. One, Prema Pracharan, propagating Prema Bhakti, pure Bhakti. And his other duty, Prema Pracharan, Ara Pashanda Dalan, and cutting all the arguments of the atheists and offenders and crushing their influence. So because the Jadyapiyamara Guru Chaitanya Das Tata Pi Janya Ami Tahara Prakash even though Sri Guru is a servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but at the same time he is also Tahara Prakash the Prakash a manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Prakash Vigraha is Nityananda Prabhu. And so we see fully manifested in the life of our Prabhupada Bhakti Stansa Thakur how he was engaged in these, these mm, two parallel missions that is Prema Pracharan, preaching pure love and at the same time Pashandadalan, crushing the atheistic ideas which are antagonistic to pure Bhakti. He appeared in the year 1874. At that time, his father, Sila Bhaktino Thakur, was living in a house called Narayan Chapta, which is on the Grand Road in Jagannath Puri. So at that time when he was born, Sila Bhaktino Thakur gave him the name Bhimala Prasad. So Bhimala is the Parashakti. <coughs> the transcendental energy of Lord Jagannath. So they're in Jagannath Puri. So he called him the servant of the, uh, the mercy of the Shakti of Lord Jagannath, Bhimla Prasad. Mm -hmm. And when he was born, he was born with his umbilical cord wrapped around his shoulder. <laughs> like a, he already looked like he'd undergone the Upanayan Sanskar. <laughs> so when he was six months old, Ratiyatra festival was going on. And it sometimes happens that Lord Jagannath has the pastime of bringing his chariot, the rat, to a standstill and no one can move it. Even soldiers, even elephants, even horses, they cannot move it. So at that time, the Lord Jagannath brought his cart to a standstill right outside the Narayan chapter, the house where Shil the Srila Bhaktinotaka was renting at that time. And the mother of the, our Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotakur, the very pious and pure devotee, Bhagavati Devi, she brought her six-month-old son and climbed up onto the wrath cart and put him at the feet of Lord Jagannath. And the small baby held on to the feet of Lord Jagannath. And then Lord Jagannath's garland fell onto the baby. So this is called Agyamala. Sometimes if a devotee is praying, Oh my Lord, please bless me that I can go on to Parikrama to some place. And then as the devotee is praying, then the, the Lord's garland drops. This is considered to be Agyamala, to give the permission. Yes, you can go. <laughs> so, and there and then, uh, the 
Srila Bhaktinath Thakur performed the Anaprasna ceremony, that is the first grain ceremony with Lord Jagannath Mahaprasada. So there was all auspiciousness from the very beginning of his uh, pastimes in this world. Srila Bhaktisattva Thakur, in his childhood, he was put in very good school and associated with many high-class pandits. He quickly learned Sanskrit and Nyai, and especially uh, astrology. When he was a boy, he had a great interest in astrology. And when he was uh, seven years old, Srila Bhaktino Thakur began to do archaeological excavation of the site of Jagarananda Pandit Subhadran Kutia in Satasan. It is one of the seven mats in Satasan Road in Jagannath Puri. And uh, at that time, Srila Bhaktino Thakur found a deity of Kurma. So he gave this Kurma deity to his seven year old son and also gave him the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And Kurma Mantra and also taught him how to do puja. So even today, children very much love teenage turtles. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so in, in childhood he was worshipping karma. But what is the deep meaning? In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna has said, Yada samharate chayam kurmangani vasavasaha indriyati indriyati vyas tasi pragya pratishtita. Uh, a person is considered to be pragya pratishtita, fixed in uh, transcendental consciousness, who is uh, satisfied within themselves and they have no attachment to the objects of the senses. In fact, they are such that when the objects of the senses are present, just as a, a tortoise can withdraw all his limbs within the shell, so in the same way they re withdraw their senses and their mind from the external world and remain steadily situated in the bliss of the self. So from childhood he was worshipping karma and he developed this power of complete control of the senses. Once when he was a boy, he went into the kitchen and he took a mango. And then afterwards his father said, Oh, this is not a Mahaprasad, it was not offered. And then he criticized himself so much. Oh, I am such a sense enjoyer. I have done a wicked deed, uh, tasting that which was not offered to the Supreme Lord first. And he made a vow, for my whole life I will never eat mango again. As a, as a penance for this uh, uh, terrible deed. So, you can see these types of qualities are quite uncommon. What to speak of in children, they're uncommon in adults. <laughs> so, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he used to travel here and there preaching, and his small son, Bhimala Prasad, used to take his father's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Chaitanya Taravita Andri's arm and accompany him to the programs in the evening time. And he would sit and patiently listen to all the teachings of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. After some time being in Puri, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur had developed quite a reputation and many persons were coming to hear his Qatar. And then, because he was a, a government official, he was uh, told by the government that he had to do some business out of state. So he left Orissa for some time and he told his son, no, you have been hearing for a long time. While I am gone, you can give the class. So then the young Bhimal Prashad began to give class in the place of his father. But after uh, speaking for some time, people were getting up and leaving. And then the next day, more and more people were leaving. And by the time Srila Bhakti no Thakur came back, then he saw that only one or two people were coming to the lecture. Uh, why? Because Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he was extremely liberal and extremely accommodating. And Prabhupada Bhaktisna Sotakura is also extremely liberal and accommodating, but perhaps in a way which is unpalatable for those who are very attached to the bodily conception of life. <laughs> so Srila Bhakti Nantako was uh, writing books and uh, publishing books and he was engaging his son in editing. So Bimla Prasad said, my father taught me to be a proofreader, but I am not only a proofreader of books, 
I am a proofreader of men. And I was born under the astrological sign of the cancer, the crab. And that is my nature. That when I meet a person, then I proofread them. And if I discover in their hearts there is anything which is contrary to Anya Bilasita Shunyam Jnana Kama Dinavrita Anukul Yen Krishnanu Shilam Bhakti Guttama Anything which contradicts the favorable and continuous engagement in loving service to Sri Krishna Any trace of Anya Bilas desires other than the service of Sri Krishna Then uh, being born under the sign of the crab then I pinch it. <laughs> so this was his preaching technique, that he would identify any anyablas, other desires. He said that if a sadhu flatters you, then that sadhu is your enemy. But rather when a sadhu is speaking, it's like a jagya, a sacrifice of goats. And the audience have come, and all their mature desires are like goats standing in a line. And the sadhu is there with his upraised Acts and he's speaking and just cutting them one after another. This is actually Harikata. <laughs> so not everyone can tolerate this because many persons are very much attached to their worldly desires. So when he was speaking, they were leaving one by one, and gradually the audience became very small. So when Sila Bhakti Vinod Thakur asked him what happened to everyone, then Prabhupada Bhakti Stanso Thakur said, Better an empty cow shed than a cow shed full of sick cows. <laughs> Maybe we have some Goshala wellers here. <laughs> so, you know. so, that was his philosophy, because if you have a core cool group of very pure persons, then you can preach everywhere. But if everyone is rotten, then better to have no one. If all are doing bhakti only as a pretense, for the Kanaka Kamini Pratista Bhagini Chariyati Yari Seito Vaishnav, Prabhupada Bhakti Stan Sotako, he wrote a song. Dushtuman, Tumiki Shara Vaishnav, oh my wicked mind, what type of devotee are you? Hmm? All your so called Nirdhyam Bhajan, chanting alone, is just for Pratista, only for show. Hmm? Kanaka Kamini Pratista Bhagini, you are begging to one tigress, the tigress of the money and the fame and the association of the of ladies, or to come and eat you. So only pure Vaishnavas, they are free from all such desires and they have conquered Maya. So, after some time, Sila, our see, Bhimala Prasad, he went to college. So when he was at college, his scholarship was extraordinary. He wrote a commentary on the Surya Siddhanta. And if you will read it, you cannot believe. Actually, he was 15 when he wrote Kam Tran Surya Siddhanta. And you cannot believe the maturity of his writing. Quite incredible. And uh, he made in the college one debating group. It was, and it was called the August Assembly. August meaning that time of the year when everything is, has become ripe. So it's for those who are ripened in their uh, determination, in their uh, spiritual life. So the only uh, prerequisite for joining this group, this debating group in his college, is that you have to take a vow to never be married in your whole life. So he was at college for some time, and then he thought, oh, I will drop out. Because if I uh, uh, finish my qualifications, then my family, they will harass me to get married. So it's better that I present myself to the world as a foolish and uneducated person than become entangled in Maya. So his professors, they begged him, please stay here, we'll keep a chair, we'll keep a chair for you uh, at the university, the chair of astrology. He said, no, I have not come to this world to count the stars. This human form of life is for bhajan. So he left his college and he thought it's better that I just maintain my life uh, by some honest work, uh, which it takes very little of my uh, energy, and spend my time chanting and serving Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. So, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, his father was very worried about his son, who was now a college dropout. <laughs> so he arranged for him to become a tutor to the uh, prince. Mm, the, it was, there was a king of uh, Tripur, and at that time Tripur was an independent state. 
So the king of Tripoli had a, a, a Yuvaraj, a crown prince, and uh, he wanted a tutor for his son. So Abhimala Prasad, then he became his tutor and he was teaching. After some time, the mother of the boy, the queen, became very disturbed. She came to the king and said, we have to get rid of this tutor. Because this tutor is having a very bad influence upon our son. Now he's wearing Tosimao. And he's also wearing Tilak. Uh, at any moment, by the influence of this tutor, he might become a sadhu and leave home. And then what we will do, our royal lineage will be finished. So then the king, he was quite sad because he had affection for our Bhima Prasad. Uh, so just to uh, sweeten the dismissal, he said, uh, I'm sorry, but you cannot continue teaching uh, our son, but I'll give you full salary. Just don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept receiving that salary up until until 1908, actually. So you can imagine, he, he began his vrat to chant a billion names in 1905. So by then he was completely uh, renounced, complete vairagi, and absorbed chanting 3 lakhs, 192 rounds of Harinam every day. And still during that time, for the first three years of his breath, he was still receiving that um, stipend, uh, that salary from the king. So then he, he left that, uh, that job, but he told the king, that's fine, I have fulfilled my purpose in coming here. First of all, you have a very grand library with very rare books of philosophy. So while I was here, I have read all of them. And second thing, I have put the Bhaktilata Beach, the seed of devotion, in the heart of your son. And it is indestructible, it's eternal, it will never go away. <laughs> so now I have done my two missions here. Please excuse me. <laughs> so then, Sila Bhaktinotraku was very worried. Oh, what will my son do now? So my Gurudev used to say, just see, though he was so qualified, because Srila Bhakti Nautaku has so much love for him, then he could not see his vaibhav, his opulence. Already his opulence was manifesting so powerfully. But when there is love, when there is snare, affection, then one becomes blind to the opulences. Just like in Vrindavan. Even if Krishna will lift Govardhan Hill for seven days and nights on his little finger, or perform so many miracles, but the bridge basses still think, oh, he's a very vulnerable child, we have to take care of him. This is the nature of love. So, Sila Bhakti Vinod Thakur had this very lokik sadbandu bhat sambandu, natural loving relationship. And he thought, my son is useless at anything in the material world. And he just arranged a piece of land for him in Mayapur. And gave him a deity and said, you stay here and do bhajan. So then, our uh, Prabhupada uh, came to Mayapur. And in 1905, he began his breath to chant three lakhs Harinam every day, staying in one place there. And he was also writing. During that time, he wrote his commentary on uh, Upadesha Amrita and also on uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And at that time also, by the influence of his Nam Bhajan, his first disciple, he was a son of a magistrate, very high class, young man. And in a dream, he saw Bhimala Prasad came to him. And, uh, and he, the next day he woke up, and then he went to that place and begged for initiation from Prabhupada Bhakti Sansur So he did not need to get up to go to preach, only by the power of his Nam Bhajan. Uh, the great personalities were coming to him. Nija Saiva Katara Karanji Vidum Vidutai Tahum Kutasinga Baram Varnaga Bali Shashanda Padam Pranamami Sada Prabhupada Padam Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakur was like a moon surrounded by the stars of his eternal associates. He said that one of the uh, special contributions of Srila Bhakti no Thakur, uh, two of the special contributions, one, he has written Shastra in such a way that it answers all the questions of the modern materialistic and, in, and um, empiricist perspective and completely removes all their doubts. 
And his second speciality is that by his fervent prayers, he called the eternal associates of Sachinanda and Gohari to come to this world. So one of them was our Prabhupada, and he was like a moon, and so many other associates, eternal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the prayers of Srila Bhakti Nautakur, descended to this world and became the stars around that world. Like our Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj Ki Srila Bhakti Vaibha Puri Goswami Maharaj Ki Srila Bhakti Dait Madan Goswami Maharaj Ki Srila Bhakti Raksha Chida Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki And so many others. So these persons, they began to approach him by the power of his Nam Bhajan. At that time he was staying in Mayapur, in the place which is called the Braj Patanam. It is on the site of the house of Chandrasheka Acharya, the maternal uncle of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was there that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates used to perform dramas in that house. And Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sutakur was doing Bhajan and there were two small lakes there and he made uh, a, a Govardhan and he was meditating that he was at the foot of Govardhan on the bank of Radhakund and Shamakund nearby and completely absorbed in his Nam Bhajan. In 1914, Srila Bhaktino Thakur left this world. And then in 1915, shortly afterwards, Srila Prabhupada's Diksha Guru, who had given him the name Sri Barshabhanami Devi Daita Das, that is our Srila Shodas Babji Maharaj, also left this world. And Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotakur went into a state of profound separation. In fact, it appeared that he was uh, in a depression. He had been writing commentary on um, Upadeshamrita and the seven verses he had completed. But now he gave up his translation also. He was seeing that the world was enveloped in darkness. Srila Bhaktinotaku before leaving had told him, O Saraswati, after I am gone, then the corrupted seed of the conception of Rupa Kavaraj will enter into our Navadip Dham Pracharini Sabha. That was their group for developing uh, the lost holy places of Navadip Dham. And everything will become spoiled. Srila Bhaktisthan Sotaku made a vow to his father. If it were to happen, then I swear that I will give my whole life to prevent it. So the meaning is that there was a, a Vaishnava at the time of Vishantak Thakur named Rupa Kaviraj. And he had an idea that you have to follow the bridge buses, not only in Siddha form, but in Sadak form as well. And so because of this, those who were following him became quite undisciplined in their practice and various types of uh, deviation entered into the Sampradaya. Because of not having a clear understanding of what is the Siddharup and Sadakrup. Sadakrup means this body in which you are situated. Seva Sadakarupena Siddharupena Chatrihi. And by this body, we never follow the residence of Vrindavan in the Krishna Lila. We follow the residence of Vrindavan in Sadak forms like Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami. Doing Sadhan, very, and following the rules and regulations of Bhakti uh, strictly. And then, Sita Rupena Chatrahi, in one's internally conceived spiritual body. What is that, internally conceived? The, the, this, the Siddha Rup has been explained in the commentaries. It means, Antas Chinti the Bista Tat Seva Upayogi Dehena, with a body which is suitable for rendering one's desired services. So, but many persons think that this is mentally conceived. That in your mind you picture something and then you start speculating about how you are serving following the bridge buses. This is not the meaning of Siddharup. This is imitation. The Siddharup 
He is the manifest. It is like an avibhav. It is like an avatar. It is a descent hmm, of a very beautiful spiritual form which appears in one's meditation. And this uh, realization comes after realizing Krishna's Nam, Rup, Gun, and associates. And then by meditating on the associates, one manifests a body which is exactly like theirs. And then the stage of service comes. Mm. So Jiva Goswami has clearly described this in Bhakti Sandarbha, that there is a Kram, Sopa, and Ritya. One should serve internally according to the sequential steps. Tannam, Rupa, Charitari, Sukirtanam. So the steps are Pratamam Namna Nusravana Antakarnam Shuddhyatam Apeksham Shuddhaj Antakarane Rupa Shavanena Tadudoy Yogyata Bhavati. Srila Jiva Goswami Pal said in Bhakti Sandarbha, in the beginning, the ability to hear the holy name depends on the Shuddhata of the Antakaran, the purity of the Chitta. If we are hearing Hare Krishna Hare. But from the perspective of our ego, hmm, then we are not really hearing the name. And when the chitta has become cheto darpana marjana, the mirror of the chitta has become cleansed. And when we hear the name, we are not thinking that we are producing the name. That the nam is jiva deen, under the control of my tongue or your tongue. But rather, our tongues are nam adin, kirtan adin, under the control of the name. And nam prabhu, golo kera prema dhan, Hari Nam Sankirtan. Nam Prabhu himself is descending. Kaler Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtan. See, this is the Nam avatar of Krishna. And that avatar is descending and dancing on the tongue. Tundai Tandavani Ratin Vitanutai Tandavali Labdai. As Srila Rupa Goswami Pada has said, Oh, when this name is dancing on my tongue, then I want millions of tongues and millions of ears. So, First, Nam should appear. And then, as the heart is purified and one experiences the descent, the avatar of Nam Prabhu, then, see, Krishna's beautiful form appears within the heart. And when the form has fully awakened, then Krishna's qualities. And then, Krishna's associates. And then you can meditate on them. Krishnam smaram janam chasya prastam nija sanitam and meditating on those associates, gradually your chitta becomes just like them and then you can serve in that in your spiritual form. So this is the actual process of Raghunuga Bhakti. It is not imagination, it is not speculation. It cannot be imitated for, uh, to produce any positive effect. But uh, rather the speculation, imitation of Nam Bhajan is uh, done by those who commit Nama Parad and they have aversion actually to the pure holy name. So Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sotakur, he was uh, writing his commentary on Upadesamrita, but on the disappearance of his Shiksha Guru Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Thakur and Diksha Guru Srila Gopshodas Bhavdi Maharaj, he fell into a type of transcendental depression. He was seeing that speculation and imitation of Raghunuga Bhakti was spreading everywhere like a disease. And so it seemed as if he were in a state of depression. What can I do? I am one person. I have no knowledge. I have no facility. I have no assistance or manpower or anything. Then one night in a dream, he saw Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur and Srila Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj. And Srila Gopishodas Babaji Maharaj, and Srila mm, Vishnu Chagri Thakur, and Srila Naratandas Thakur, and the six Goswamis, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the whole Pancha Tattva, and they were all doing very loud, ecstatic Harinam Sankirtan. And seeing them in the dream, he became very enlivened. And Srila Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj, and Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur, and his whole Guru Prampara, they came up to him and surrounded him. And he said, and they said to him, Oh, don't be discouraged. Now is the time to preach. We will send you everything. We will send you unlimited resources. We will send you unlimited scholarship and unlimited supporters. Just begin your preaching now. And then when Prabhupada Bhakti Thakur, he woke up. Then he became very inspired and he began very energetic preaching. We 
regarding Deity to Prabhupada Bhakti Sarasu Thakur, if he had not illuminated the path of pure bhakti and explained the what is real ragamark, giving evidence <coughs> from Srila Jiva Goswami and others, then it's highly likely that the pure path would have been completely lost. He was very much opposed to the Prakrita Sahaja. Now, this term Prakrita Sahaja is very much misunderstood because generally people think it's a pejorative to be thrown around to insult people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, he's a Sahaja. He's a Sahaja. You're a Sahaja. Okay? Like this, so, no, it's not an insult. Uh, it's a technical term. It actually means something. So what does it mean? Sila Prabhupada in Calcutta at the Albert Hall gave uh, a seminar there about uh, the divine sound, transcendental sound. And there he said that if a person is surrendered to their guru, and they are serving fully with all their body, mind, words and senses. Then when they hear the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental sound, from the lips of a pure devotee, then there is no difference between the Nam and Nami, between Krishna and His name. There is no difference between the, the description of Sri Krishna's Leela and Krishna's Leela itself. So when that disciple is listening to his Guru, then in his heart he is seeing, Shutekshitapata, he is seeing the pastimes of Krishna through the ears, through the process of hearing. Then in Braji he said, Pat ute parda ute, which means when the kata begins, then the curtain rises. You know? Because if you go to a theatre and you sit down, it's in the dark, then the lights come on and the curtain rises and then the drama begins and you can see it. So Pat ute parda ute, that when the harikata begins, for those who are really surrendered, then the curtain rises and they see the drama of Krishna's Leela. This is actually the real meaning of Shravanam. Mm -hmm. But very few are those persons who actually have Bhakti Adhika, who have that eligibility to experience what is real Shravanam. So what to speak of real Kirtanam or Smaranam, which is the, the Mukya Anga, the main limb of Raganuga Bhakti. So people in general, they don't understand what is Smaranam. They don't understand what is Shravanam even. So he explained that if a person is not surrendered and they're not dedicated to the service of their guru, then what happens when the transcendental sound comes, it becomes interfered, it becomes intercepted by Maik Vyavadan. That means the impediments coming from Maya. And then the message, the transcendental message of the Supreme Lord becomes refracted. Uh, and instead of giving a direct experience, that is called the Jatiti, pra uh, jatiti Prakita, a direct internal realization upon hearing. Instead, one gets four types of knowledge. Paritz Chinda Gyan, Sankir Gyan, Vikrta Gyan, and Vivarta Grasta Gyan. Uh, Gyan. So Paritz Chinda Gyan means uh, fractions, parts of information. Instead of having experience of the Krishna's pastimes, you just collect some bits of information. Or it may be Sankir Gyan means, oh, perhaps a little realization is coming, but it's mixed with some uh, material ideas, Sankirga, or Vikrita means distorted knowledge, or just completely Vivarta Grasta. Vivarta is, means that the knowledge is completely under the grip of illusion, total misunderstanding. So, unless one will follow Krishna's teaching in Gita, Tadviti Pranipatena Paritrashnena Sevaya Upadaksantite Gyanam Gyanas Tattvadarshana to approach the sadhu. Pranipat, falling on the ground without reservation, without hesitation, and in a mood of complete surrender, and rendering service, and posing relevant questions. By this, one can receive the Shabda Brahma, the transcendental uh, sound, which is the Swayam Prakash, self-illuminating. And then one has direct experience and realization. And if one is only imitating, if one is uh, pretending, if one has, is not niskapat and niswarta, free from duplicity and not free from selfishness, then the message will come and it will be refracted into the Parishchina Gyan, Sankir Gyan, Vikrta Gyan and Vivarta Krasta Gyan. Four types of the illusory knowledge. So then for that person, when they are chanting Harinam, 
instead of the holy name manifesting in their heart Krishna's form and qualities, uh, nothing manifests. And so then they try to manifest it by their own material effort. So Sahaja, Sahaja, Saha means with and Ja means born. You are born with a particular prakriti nature. So, that it, so if you think that the transcendental experience will come within the limitation of the material nature with which you are born, then Prabhupada himself coined the phrase Prakrita Sahaja. Prakrita Sahaja. So just as if you go to a, a clothing store, you can see in the window there are dummies there. So these are called uh, uh, Putalika. Putalika. So these are not human beings. They are a, a fake. A very cheap, uh, fake type of human being looking thing. <laughs> so, when your bhajan is fake, like that, not real, then this is called pautalikata. Pautalikata. It is a pretend, a fake bhajan. So, as long as the heart is not receiving the Shabda Brahma and the transcendental knowledge is not Swayam Prakash Shabda Siddha self manifested in the heart, then those, in, instead of being humble and thinking, I must surrender more. I must serve more. I must pray, Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya, Koro E Dasi, Trinapeksha Ati Hina, O Gurudev bestow your mercy upon me and make me more humble than a blade of grass. They try to sidestep all of these inconvenient things mm -hmm. eh? and go straight for the bhajan. Mm -hmm. But what is their bhajan? Pautalikata. Only cheap mannequins in the window. This is not really Radha and Krishna. This is the product of the material mind. Aprakrita Vastu Nahi Prakrita Gocha. Vediparaneti e kohi niranta. Mahapu said that the divine substance never appears within the confines of property, the mature energy. And all the Vedas and Puranas repeat this again and again. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotakur, after the disappearance of his Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru, and seeing these misconceptions had spread everywhere, so he had gone into the transcendental depression. What can I do for this? But his old Guru Parampara came to him and gave him blessings, and then he became filled with enthusiasm, and many qualified young men, the cream of society, doctors and lawyers, and persons from very aristocratic families, they uh, left whatever they were doing, and became fully surrendered at his lotus feet, and he empowered them, and began to preach bhakti everywhere, it's very, very strongly. Sometimes he would come out of the mud, and one old person used to come to him and accost him, Oh, you are a cheetah, you are bogus. Hmm? And the disciples, they were so angry that this person was insulting their guru. But he's checked them, Shh, don't say anything. After some time, Prabhupada Bhakti Sarasataku came out from the mud for a walk and he asked his disciples, Oh, where is that old man who used to come here? They said, Oh, Prabhupada, he passed away. And they were, I'm sure, relieved that he passed away. But Prabhupada became very grave and he said, he was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the nature of the transcendentalist. We can see to what degree we have become purified. If someone glorifies us, and that is like music to the ears. Oh, again, have twenty dollars, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> then there's no bhakti at all. If bhakti is appearing in the heart, then one will become shy and ashamed if someone will glorify him. And if someone will criticize him, then he'll think, oh, this is nectar. Really, this is nectar. Huh? Because the Vaishnava is always criticizing himself. This is one of the bars, the Atmaninda, self-criticism. Amara jivana sada papirata nahiko punya lesha. Srila Bhakti Nautako said, my whole life I was sinful. I have not even a slight trace of piety in me. I have given so much trouble and problems to other persons. When I see that someone is failing, then I feel good satisfaction in my heart. And if I see that someone is becoming successful, then I become depressed. Oh, why is he becoming successful? So it's very painful to hear. But this is the nature of the conditioned soul. Every conditioned soul is corrupt to the core. And don't say that it's not true and you're not in that category. <laughs> <laughs> of course, some of you are liberated, but the ones of you are not liberated. Every conditioned soul is corrupt to the core. 
and they have they're boiling with the fever of enviousness and uh, lust and anger and greed and covered by a little veneer and scintillac <laughs> 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 and uh, we can fool others but we cannot fool Gurudev Gurudev knows everything and Guru will arrange some situation in our life to provoke us so that the bad qualities will come out also so be careful <laughs> Always remember Mahaprabhu's teaching. Tanada peace we need to have. One who it does not react when they're provoked, then this is very pleasing to the Supreme Lord, and by that you can purchase his heart. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutako set this example in his own life. He was very, very humble. Although he used to preach boldly like a lion and criticize. Uh, the faults, those things which are against bhakti. He was not against any individual soul. There's a saying, you know, hate the sin but not the sinner. He was not against anyone, but many persons misunderstood him and became against him. So, Sila Bhakti Sinanso Thakur, when his disciples would come and give pranam to him, he would fold his hands and say, Das Osmi, I am your servant. So, our Param Gurudev, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj, he also always used to go into a hidden place and give pranam in the distance, hiding, so his guru could not return the pranam to him. In 1924, it was the 50th birthday, the anniversary of the birth of Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sutakur, and at that time he reinitiated the process of Vyasa Puja on the birthday of the guru. Because generally, persons were doing Guru Puja on Vyasa Purnima, the birthday of Vyasa Day not on the individual day of their guru. But our um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, they used to do a Guru Purnima for Ishwar Puri and, uh, a, a Guru Puja for Ishwar Puri and Madhavendra Puri on their birthday. But this tradition had been lost over time and Prabhupada Bhaktisana Sutakur um, re-initiated uh, that uh, tradition. So on that day, he said to all of his disciples, that I see you as forms of my Gurudev, that my spiritual master has come in many forms to engage me in his service. So you are my Vipad Banjan Bandhu. That Vipad means calamity, and Banjan means breaking. Bandhu means friend. So he used to look to his disciples and say, you are my friends who have come to save me from the great calamity of being indifferent to the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because you were engaging me constantly in hearing, chanting, and remember. So he was extremely humble. But many persons, uh, they could not understand his message. Because in 1918, he took sannyas. So in our Gaudiya line, very few, negligible amount of persons had taken sannyas after the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, and uh, also his. Gurudev, Ishwara Puri, and many disciples of Madhavendra Puri, like Brahmananda Bharati, Brahmananda, Paramananda Puri, and others. They were sannyasis. And Lakshmi Pati, Madhavendra Puri, Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. There were many sannyasis in our line up to the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But our six Goswamis, they did not take sannyas. They accepted the Paramahamsa Vesh without any ceremony. Sanatana so Goswami just took an old uh, used cloth of Tapa Mesha and he tore it and put it on. There was no Babaji Vesh ceremony. So nowadays people say, well, we, you are not following the Sis Goswamis, we are following the Sis Goswamis. But actually, uh, Sila Bhaktisthan Sutakwa tore his own cloth and put it on. And that was his entrance into Vairagi, the, the renounced order. So he did what Srila Sanatana Goswami did. And those who are receiving Babaji Vesh, According to Vidi, some rules and regulations, that's not what the six Goswamis did. They were Paramahamsas. They were not involved in any, uh, this type of Vidi. So, Bhaktisna Sutaka also being Paramahamsa, he put on his own cross and like this. But he did it before a picture of his Gurudev. So, for a transcendental person who has realization, the picture of Guru and Gurudev is the same. So, we, it cannot be said as some have made the accusation that actually he gave to himself independently of his guru's uh, desire or request. So, 
when he was uh, younger, he made a very, very elaborate and in-depth study of the Ramanuja Sri Sampradaya and also the Madhva Sampradaya. And we see that uh, he associated with many scholars and saints from those Sampradayas. And this gave him the inspiration that when he decided and he was blessed, now you should preach, he thought the best way to preach is uh, to do what Ramanujacharya has done, what Madhvacharya has done. They have accepted sannyas and they have made mats and they have accepted brahmacharis in the mats and trained them and then sent them out full time preaching. Because at the time of Srila Bhaktino Thakur, mainly the Sangha were all Grihastas who were doing jobs. So they had some time for preaching and they could do something. But Prabhupada Bhaktisnasa Thakur, he wanted a very strong army of persons, full time preaching, 24 hours. So, seeing the example of Madhvacharya and Ramanujacharya, and also receiving the order of Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur, you should establish the Daivi Varnasham. Daivi Varnasham. That is the Varnasham Dharma, which is uh, catering towards everyone entering into pure bhakti. Sometimes people say, this is not written in Shastra, Daivi Varnasham. Uh -huh. okay. In chapter 16 of Bhagavad Gita, there is called the Daiva Asura Sampad. That is the yoga of discrimination between the nature of Asuras, the demonic persons and godly persons. Daiva and Asura Sampad. Those who have a demonic nature and those who have a godly nature. So when Varnashram Dharma is performed just for sense gratification, this is the, what the demons do. Ravan also followed Varnashram Dharma. Hiranyakashipu also followed Varnashram Dharma. And so many demons, Duryodhan, and others, they followed Varnashram Dharma. They gave charity, they, they did so many pious activities. But what was the purpose? To inflate their own position, their own ego, their own enjoyment, their own position. Hmm? So that is the Asur, Asuri Varnashram Dharma. So actual Varnashram Dharma is, Daivi Varnashram Dharma is the, the, uh, manifesting the true purpose of Varnashram Dharma, where every person performs their duty as without attachment to the result, as an offering to God, to make a social platform in which sadhus can uh, freely go here and there and inspire everyone to practice bhajan in whichever position they are. Stane stita sutikatam tanovan manobi ye praya sojita titopa sita As Lord Brahma has said, no need to change your ashram or your varna or anything. Wherever you are, listen to Harikata, engage in Harinam Sankirtan, and such a praying will come that Supreme Krishna, who cannot be conquered by anyone, will be conquered by your love. So, because Sila Bhaktinoda Thakur had said that you should try to establish the uh, Daivi Varnasham, because at that time, especially in Bengal, all the aristocracy and the intelligentsia of Bengal were being anglicized and becoming Christians and becoming empiricists and following Western philosophy. So there was a danger that the the whole structure of society would fall apart. So, for all of these reasons, uh, in 1918, our Sri Bhashabani Devi Das became Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. So his disciples call him Prabhupada. Prabhupada is a, such a title. It means, uh, who is uh, situated at the feet of the Supreme Lord. Or it can mean that Prabhu at whose feet so many other sages and, and sadhus and pure Vaisnava are sitting in his shelter. So this uh, title, can any disciple has the right to call his uh, Guru Prabhupada. Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu refers to uh, Sanatana Goswami as Prabhupada. Srimad Prabhupada Amboja Amrita and, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta. And also we can see in Chaitanya Charamrita when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back from his tour of South India, then Kashi Mishra was informed by the king, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will stay in your house. So there he said, Kohi Kashi Mishra Kohi Ami Bara Bhagavan Prabhupada Amagriha Hobi Abhastan. Oh, I am very fortunate because Prabhupada will stay in my house. So we see Kashi Mishra called uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Prabhupada. 
also. Because he is Mahaprabhu, and two Prabhus are always at his feet, Nityananda Prabhu and Advaita Prabhu. So, but at the time of Srila Bhakti Sanso Thakur, in Bengal, this title Prabhupada was reserved only for caste Goswamis. Caste Goswamis. Those who were claiming to be the direct descendants of Nityananda Prabhu or any other associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if they had a child and their son was born, he's already Prabhupada. Just by birth, he's Prabhupada. And mm -hmm. any other Vaishnava could not be called Prabhupada, they could only be called Das Anudas, servant of the servant of Prabhupada. <laughs> so this uh, caste system had become uh, very strong. And so for our Bhakti Sanso Thakur to accept this title Prabhupada, it had implications and ramifications that unless you were there at the time, you don't understand. It was very radical and revolutionary and infuriating uh, to the very strict caste society at that time. What is this? They're all chanting Prabhupada, Prabhupada to him. He's not born in our Brahmin family or, or descendant of any associate of Mahaprabhu or Nityananda Prabhu. He's from uh, Kayasta family and so on. So they would criticize in this way. So it was very, very radical. And when Prabhupada Bhaktisna Sutaku was leading Navadip down Parakrama through Navadip town and they came to Paramatala, at that time some of those caste Goswamis and smarter Brahmins also, they got some thugs and they were on the rooftops and they were throwing the big colonial era soda bottles and, uh, and rocks from the roofs. Uh, and trying, they were throwing them at the deities, at the devotees, they were trying to kill Srila Prabhupada. So at that time many persons were afraid and they ran for their lives. But our Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami, by force he caught Srila Prabhupada and dragged him into a house and then shut the door and then told him, give me your cloth. Prabhupada said no, but he would not take no for an answer. And he took Srila Prabhupada's cloth and gave him his own cloth and then sent him out. And now no one recognized him. And then our Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami at that time, his name was Vinod Brahmachari. He was very tall and had same spectacles. He looked very much like Prabhupada Bhakti Sattakur. So he was dressed up and he was made, waiting for the mob to come and kill him. But fortunately, he, uh, they did not uh, harm him. And when he, only when he heard the news that Srila Prabhupada had arrived safely in Mayapur, then he escaped from that place and he went there. So, you can see that now, I remember a few years ago I was with Param Pujbhat Srila Bhakti Vidyan Bharati Maharaj and he was saying, now those very caste Goswamis and others who were criticizing the Navadip Dham Parakrama of uh, Prabhupada Bhakti Sutaka, now they themselves are doing Navadip Dham Parakrama with thousands of people. So the imitation is the highest form of flattery. And uh, we can see a few generations later, people understand the contribution of our Sri uh, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Guru Prampara. Because actually, where are the different islands of Navadvip? At that time, no one knew. Srila Bhakti Nautako discovered all of these places and wrote about it in Navadvip Bhavtaranga and in Navadvip Dham Mahatmya. And then he told Prabhupada Bhakti Sutaku to uh, re-initiate, uh, re-inaugurate this Navadip Dham Parakrama, which was first done by uh, Jiva Goswami under the guidance of Nityananda Prabhu. Later, it was performed by Nartam Das Thakur Srinivasacharya and Ramananda Kaviraj uh, under the guidance of Ishan Thakur, servant in the house of Sachimata. And But then for many years, there was no Parakrama. And Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur, we can say he's like a contractor. If Srila Bhakti no Thakur is the architect, then Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur is the contractor. Srila Bhakti no Thakur wrote the plans how Krishna consciousness should be spread all over the world. And then the contractor Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur, according to those plans, he implemented them practically in the world. And we can see today how tremendously successful it was. So even the only a few generations later, the descendants of his detractors are now honoring him by following in his footsteps. Yeah. Whether they admit it or not, <laughs> we are satisfied. <laughs> the glorification is there, admittedly or unadmittedly. So, Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotaku was so powerful. Sila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj. 
his name, that time his name was Prabhupada Pranavananda Brahmachari. And he said that Srila Prabhupada was printing so many periodicals. They had monthly journals, uh, bi uh, uh, weekly journals, weekly journals, and even they had a daily newspaper, Nadia Prakash. So you can imagine how hard all the devotees are working all the time, producing these and distributing them. It's uh, quite astonishing. So articles had to come all the time. And Prabhupada Bhaktisana Sutako, he would call, Oh, Pranavananda Brahmachari, come here. Ananta Vasudev, come here. Sundarananda Vidvinod. They were his two main scholars. He called them his right and left hand. So then the three of them would sit at his feet and uh, take a pen and paper. And then he would dictate one sentence to the first one. And while he was writing it, then he would dictate a sentence to the next one. And while he was writing that, he would dictate a sentence to the next one. And if one of them, their pen stopped, because they'd finished writing, then he would say the next sentence to the next one, like this. And in this way, he would dictate three different philosophical articles at the same time. <laughs> so you can just not even imagine how much space he has on his hard drive. <laughs> And you can read the articles of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. They're so astonishing and so perfect. But he was running three of them at the same time and just dictating. So after some time, Pranavananda Brahmachari came to his Gurudev. And uh, Prabhupada told him, You have heard so much from me and you have uh, taken dictation of so many articles. From now on, I want you to write your own articles. He said, Gurudev, I can write your articles, but I cannot write my own articles. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, no, just, just begin. And then he, he took a pen and paper, and he said, but Gurudev, I don't know how to begin. He said, begin like this. Sri Sri Guru Gaurango Jayataha. Oh, glories to Guru Gauranga. So then, Parnavananda Brahmachari took his pen, he wrote Sri Sri Guru. And when he wrote the syllable Ru, then he had fantastic ideas were coming to him. <laughs> and from that day, for his whole life, till he was 101 years old, his pen never stopped. <laughs> so, our Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakwa is like this. This is the power of the Agya, order of Guru. Agya Guru Nam Avicharaniya. One should not deliberate on the order of Guru. What Guru has ordered, one should just do it. Qualified, not qualified. This is not our decision. By mercy of Guru, he can use us to become an instrument to manifest his mercy in the world. So Pranavaranda Brahmachari experienced this in his life. I met once, I went to the birthplace of Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutakur in uh, Jagannath Puri. And uh, after some time, that house in the Ryan Chakta where Prabhupada was bought, uh, born, it was demolished. But the land was uh, uh, purchased by Srila Bhakti Dait Madhav Maharaj. And they constructed a very beautiful mat there in Prabhupada's birthplace. So I went there and it was perhaps the last or one of the very last surviving disciples of Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakur. That was a Sri Krishna Keshav Brahmachari. Anyone know him? Sri Krishna Keshav Brahmachari. So he was Srila Prabhupada's personal servant and he used to cook for Srila Prabhupada. So he was a very uh, astonishing person, even to the last moment when he was on his bed and couldn't move. And we came to see him, he was preaching very uh, powerfully. So his history, how he joined the Mart, is quite astonishing. Srila Prabhupada came to his village. It was like a remote village. And uh, only seeing Prabhupada, he was astonished and became very attached to him. And when Srila Prabhupada was leaving, he, with tears in his eyes, he begged, Oh, please, I want to join your mission. So they had made a march nearby that village. Srila Prabhupada told him, Don't go and join in that march. Because it's close by, all the villages will come and they'll make a, a big disturbance to the heart. You're only 15, it will be a big problem. So look, 
I'll give you a train ticket. And he sent one of his brahmacharis to get a train ticket. And Srila Prabhupada gave the train ticket. He said, here's a train ticket. You should go uh, travel to some distance to the near, nearest station. And he'd never been to that. He, in fact, in his life, he'd never even seen a train. Uh, and Prabhupada said, you get on the train there to Calcutta. And one stop before Calcutta, get down at the train station. And one brahmachari will be, will be waiting there to meet you. And he'll bring you to our Amat in Calcutta. Okay? Then he said, yes, Guru Dev, I'll do it. And then Srila Prabhupada left. <coughs> so then, the next day, he made his way to the train station. It's just a 15-year-old boy from the village. And the train came. Uh, Agasura. Like a big... <laughs> so he'd never seen a train before in his life. It was quite overwhelming for him. So then he got on the train and he was sitting on the train and he was going for some time, some hours. And then when he was sitting there, he was thinking, oh, what if I get off at the wrong station? Or what if I get down at the station? And there's no one there to meet me. And I don't know my way back. And I have no way of getting back. And, and he just started to cry. And he was sitting on the train and crying. Then he looked up and saw, oh, Srila Prabhupada was there. And Bhaktisthan Sutaku came into his carriage and sat down with him. And he was holding him and stroking his head and saying, don't cry, look. I told you what to do. Just, just stop before Calcutta, you should get down. And Brahmacharya will be waiting for you. So then he dried his eyes and Prabhupada said, Okay, so do you understand? Y yes, Gurudev. Yeah. You won't cry anymore, will you? No, pro no Prabhupada, I won't cry anymore. Huh? So you trust what I'm saying? Yes, Prabhupada, I trust you. All right, okay. So that when he made him peaceful and he, his heart was satisfied, then he got up and then he went. And then when he arrived at that station, he got down and Brahmachari brought him to the mat. He said, from that time, when I was 15 year, years old, then I realized that Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotako was not an ordinary person. <laughs> in Mayapur, in the Sri Chaitanya Mart, that is the headquarters, of the whole Gaudiya, the mission, the whole mission of Prabhupada Bhakti Sansotaku, there was one big jackfruit tree. And so many jackfruits, sometimes they grow so huge, you can feed so many people with them. But every time a jackfruit became ripe on the tree, and the devotees were thinking, oh, tomorrow or the next day we'll take it and we'll offer it to Krishna, and uh, offer both to Krishna and take Mahaprasad of jackfruit sabji. Huh? Then, but the jackfruits would just disappear. So they were thinking some thief is coming to the box, and every time some jackfruits are ripe, stealing our jackfruit. We cannot allow this, stealing from Krishna. So then brahmacharis took turns, and at night they stayed nearby watching the tree at night. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't see anyone, they could not catch anyone, but still, every time a jackfruit or a few jackfruits became ripe, they disappeared. So then they were thinking, what's going on? So there was a thief. The thief was very clever. He thought, uh, well, they'll know because all thieves steal at night, but I'll steal during the day. <laughs> and then they won't catch me. He was watching what was going on in the mat. And if you know, in any Gaudi mat, after the noon RT and then prasada, <laughs> everyone takes a rest. <laughs> so he saw the daily life in the mat. And in the afternoon, when everyone was taking rest, they used to come and steal the jackfruit. So one devotee had an idea. I'll stay awake when everyone sleeps and watch this tree. So he was watching and he saw that thief came and he took about four jackfruits and he came and caught him. And then he woke everyone up. Hey, I caught the thief! I've caught the thief! And everyone woke up and came and they started to beat him. So then one devotee said, no, no, don't beat him. Let's take him to Srila Prabhupada. And what punishment Srila Prabhupada uh, prescribes for him, he should have that punishment. So they agreed. And they brought the thief before Srila Prabhupada with his four big jackfruits. <laughs> <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada asked him, uh, What's your name? He said, He's there. Uh, what village are you from? He said, this village. Do you have family? He said, Yes, yes, I have wife and have children and my old parents also living in my home. 
So you have enough junk food for your whole family for one week. And, uh, but you cannot live on a diet of only junk food. So then, Sila Prabhupada called the Bandari. So he called the Bandari, the quartermaster. And he told him, oh, go into the store and bring uh, so many the pounds of uh, rice and dal and some other vegetables. Bring them here. And then Srila Prabhupada sent a few brahmacharis to carry everything back to that person's home. And so he left not only with his jackfruit, because you can't live on jackfruit, <laughs> but also with some rice and dal and other vegetables. And he arrived back in his home. The devotees were thinking, what is Prabhupada doing? So they cannot understand his mind. When that man returned home, he told his whole family you know, what had happened. And they became so inspired that himself and the whole family, they came back to the mart and they surrendered and took initiation for Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> <laughs> so the pure Vaishnavas, they have such a vision. How to bring about the benefit of all the living entities? Srila Prabhupada, he did Brajmandal Parakrama. And he stayed in Radhakund. And when he was in Radhakund, he was giving lectures on the Upanishads. Why? Because it's necessary to have a strong foundation in Siddhanta. Siddhanta Baliachiti Nakara Alas. The others who were there thought, why is he speaking on the Upanishads here in Radhakund? But Yahoitis Krishna Lagi Surdhamanas. If one has a very strong understanding of Siddhanta, then the mind will become steady. And with a steady mind, when one chants the holy name, then gradually there is an unfolding of realization. But also during Brajmanda Parakrama and another year when Prabhupada Bhaktisana Sutaku came and spent the entire Kartik in Radhakund, he began to speak on the Astakali Lila of Radha and Krishna. That means the pastimes of Radha Krishna as they're going on eternally, for, since the early morning, the Shantalila before the sun rises, at the end of night, when Radha and Krishna are uh, lying asleep in each other's tight embrace in the Nikunj, and then soon the sun will rise, so Vrinda Devi tells the birds, the peacocks and parrots to sing, to very sweetly wake up Radha and Krishna. But they're so attached to each other, they don't want to go home. So it's a very bittersweet moment, and we are celebrating and remembering that every morning in Mangalati. And then Krishna returns to Nandagal, and Radhika returns to Yavat. Then Krishna wakes up and goes to milk the cows, and Radharani is bathed and decorated by her sakis, and then she comes to Nandagal to cook in the kitchen of Yashoramaya. Krishna comes back, takes his bath, and then takes the uh, preparations cooked by Shimati Radhika and then he leaves the village of Nandagaon with his cows and friends and goes out to the forest. So like this, Krishna's daily pastimes as the Kali Lili, are going on. They are ocean of unlimited prema rasa. So Srila Bhaktisthan Sutako began to speak on this. He said that you are not qualified to hear it but those who have been chanting Harina for 15 or 20 years then they should know about this highest ideal. One should not make the mistake of thinking that the goal of life is anarta nivriti. <laughs> the goal of my life is to get free from kam, krod, lo, moha, madam, matsarya, lust, anger, greed. And this is not the goal of life, anarta nivriti, to take away the unwanted things. The goal of life is the arta property, how to get the valuable objective of life. What is that valuable objective of life? That is Radha Das. Hmm. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutakur, very often an emphasis is put on his cutting of Mayavad philosophy and cutting the jungles of different types of philosophical deviations. But Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutakur was the topmost Rasik Vaishnava. He is the incarnation of Naina Mani Manjri. Naina Mani Manjri means Naina Mani means the jewel of the eyes of Radharani. 
just as the eyelids spontaneously, without any thought or conscious volition, if something comes to threaten the eye, the eyelids immediately close and protect the eye. So in the same way, spontaneously, with great love, Radhika is always protecting her Paliadasi, her maidservant. That is Naina Mani Manjari. So that very Naina Mani Manjari came to, in this world as Prabhupada Bhakti Sansu Thakur. Towards the end of his pastimes, he was staying in Chatak Prabhat in Jagannath Puri and weeping. Nija Nikatani Basam Dehi Govadanatva Pramada Madana Lila Kandare Kandare Te Rachati Navayuna Dwanga Vasvinda Mandam Itikila Kalanatam Lagna Kastad Payome Nija Nikatani Basam Dehi Govadanatva O Giraj Govadan In your very beautiful caves and kunjas the beautiful divine couple Radha Krishna are intoxicated in their loving pastimes, and you are the witness of those pastimes, so you can grant that vision to me. Oh, Giraj Govardhan, please give me a residence at your side. In 1991, my Gurudev told what he had heard from his Gurudev Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami. Towards the end of the pastimes of Prabhupada Bhakti Sansu Thakur, he called some of his senior devotees together. So Vinod Brahmacharya, Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj was there, and Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj, Kunj Bihari, and others. And he said, I came to this world to give that the Sri Chaitanya Mahapu came to give. I wanted very much to speak more about the reasons for Chaitanya Mahapu's appearance and the speciality of his gift. But I spent so much time cutting the jungles of Aul, Baul, Kartabaja, Nera, Kartabaja, Nera, Jat, Gosai, Sahaja, Saki, Veki, Smarta, Atibari, Chudadari, Goranga, Nagari, Eiteras, Sangi, Totukohi, Eiteras, Sangi, Nahikari, all these Apasampradayas, Aul, Baul, Kartabaja, Nara, Daravesha side. So many deviant sects, he had to cut this. He said, but, and then his face became very red. And he said, Yasya kadapi vasananchale kailan utta dhanyati dhanya pavanena kritatamani yogendra durga magati marusudanopi tasya namostu brishabhanu bhuvo disheti. Simati Radhika is in mind, she's somewhat upset with Krishna. And she's on the other side of the Radha Kund. And Krishna has come on this side. And he's looking, where is Radhika? Where is Radhika? Just then a breeze blew and touched the corner of the Anchal of Radhika. And as the breeze touched her cloth, it became infused with the angus or of the fragrance of Radhika's body. So now the breeze was intoxicated by the fragrance of Shimati Radhika. And just as an intoxicated person cannot walk quickly, so this breeze also stumbled and staggered across the surface of Radhika. And as Krishna was sitting and uh, feeling great separation from Radhika, then her fragrance entered into his nose. And he folded his hands and gave praise to the breeze. Oh breeze, danyati danya pavanena kritatamani. You have made my life successful. This is prem kata, the nature of love. So yogendra draga gatiya madhusudanopi, that madhusudan Krishna, who is very difficult to attain for the great yogis, if they'll have a glimpse of him for one split second in their trance, they'll consider their life successful. But that very Krishna, if he can only smell the fragrance of Radhika from far away, he feels that his life is successful. <laughs> Therefore, tasya namostu brishabhanu bhuvo dishayipi, I bow down. I am not qualified to bow down to Radhika. I bow down to only to the direction in which Simati Radhika, the daughter of Brishabhana Maharaj, is standing. 
So Prabhupada Bhaktisthana Sutakur became very emotional and spoke this verse. He said, then he said another verse. He said, Raghunath Daska Swami has said, Smara Vilasita Talpe Jaupalila Manalpam Kramakati Parihinam Vibrate Te Nasaradam Mito Viva Pariramba Ramba Vritaika Vashma Shanamapi Mamaradha Netramanandayatvam when will the beauty of Radhika give joy to my eyes? She's reclining on a bed of flowers with her beloved hero, Sri Krishna. And at that time, she's feeling so many waves of love that she's speaking. So much jalpa. Jalpa lila manalpam. And not a little, a lot. Alpa means a little. Jalpa lila manalpam. She's speaking so much. And what she's saying, Kramakrita Parihina, Vibrati Taina Sarna, one sentence has no connection with the next sentence. <coughs> it's very confusing. Krishna thinking, what is she talking about? Uh, in her great ecstasy. And she's embracing Krishna so tightly, it's as if the two of them will become one. When will this vision give joy to my eyes? So Prabhupada Bhakti Saswa Thakur his was began to share. The, his divine ecstasies as Naina Mani Manji. Before, sometimes he would be speaking Harikatha and he would say, Nadyasthadata dupadarya makunda gita avata lakshita mano bhava bhagna vega alinga nasta gita momi bhuja marare grinanti padu yugalam kamalo pahara. The gopis are in their homes. But they can hear the sound of Sri Krishna's flute. And Srimati Radhika is saying, Oh, when Sri Krishna plays upon his flute on the bank of Jamuna, then the current, the flow of Jamuna stops. She becomes stunned. And then she goes into whirlpools. And these whirlpools twist the lotus flowers and break them from their stems. And then by the waves of her hands, she carries the lotus flowers and offers them as gifts, as a presentation at the feet of Krishna. Oh, how fortunate is Jamuna? I am here trapped inside my home. But Jamuna Devi is serving Sri Krishna. And Prabhupada Bhakti Sahasrataka's voice became choked and he became stunned and tears were flowing from his eyes. Once Prabhupada Bhakti Sahasrataka was in Puri and it was the time of the Snan Yatra. So as you know, after the bathing ceremony of Lord Jagannath, then you cannot have his darshan for 15 days because they do the uh, Nava Yovana that is changing the, the decorations, the cloth which is covering the body of face of Lord Jagannath and repainting. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to leave Puri and he used to go to the place called the Brahmagiri and there is a temple, Alanath temple. So th there is a very beautiful four-handed deity of Lord Narayan and when Mahaprabhu went there, his separation was so high. This place is called the uh, Dutya Sanyas Sthan, the place of Mahaprabhu's second sanyas. Because his first sanyas is he left all of his associates of Navadvip and went to Puri. But the time of the uh, Navayovana, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also leaves all of his Puri associates and goes and stays alone there in, in the temple of Alanath. So when Mahaprabhu was running there, he was feeling so much separation that just before he arrived at the, at the temple of Alanath, he fainted and fell to the ground. And by the influence of his Mahabhav, the stone beneath him melted. And so perhaps some of you, have you been? Yeah, have you been? So there's a, there's a stone there with the imprint of Mahaprabhu's elbows and his head and his chest and knees and feet where the stone melted when he fell to the ground. So this place, had, it's a very important place, but it had fallen into ruin, complete ruin. So at the time when Prabhupada Bhakti Thakur came there, he thought, oh, I must, as a service to the Holy Dharma and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, renovate this important place. So he took some money that the, the devotees of Gaudiya Math had collected, and called many artisans, and they began to rebuild the temple and, and renovate the temple. 
So Prabhupada, Bhaktisthana Sattaku, was so enthusiastic for the renovation of this temple that when the workers were taking a break to roll their cigarettes, he said, just, you keep working, I'll roll your cigarettes. And he was, he was rolling cigarettes for the workers. Huh? Can you believe it? Sila <laughs> Prabhupada was rolling cigarettes. So, one day, the devotees looked around, and they said, where's Prabhupada? And they couldn't see him. So they began searching and they wandered in the forest nearby and they found Srila Prabhupada lying unconscious in the forest, on the ground, weeping. So when Prabhupada Bhaktisthana Sotaku came to external consciousness again, he said, I saw the Swarup of this place. He said that once during the Vasanta Rasalila, Springtime Rasalila at Govardhan. Rasalila was going on, and Sri Krishna thought he would play a trick by hiding from the Prajagopis. So he disappeared and went inside a kunj. After some time, he saw gopis were coming. So he said, I should go somewhere else. But as he was coming out, he saw they were coming from the other side, and, the other, and he was surrounded on all sides, and there was no way out. So then he thought, What will I do? And then as gopis got nearer to him, then see Krishna, he manifested a forearm form. Uh -huh. And when the gopis came, and they, they thought, oh, is that Krishna there? And they came, then they saw Lord Narayan, forearm form. Then they bowed down. Yossi, Sosti, Namostate, whoever you are, our pronounce to you. Please bless us that we can find the son of Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> so they prayed to Lord Narayan that they could meet with see Krishna, and then they went on their way. So then Krishna was very chuffed with himself. That trick worked. And then he said, oh, now Radhika will come. So then Radhika was coming. And as Radhika approached, then the fragrance of Shimati Radhika came before her on the breeze. And only smelling the fragrance of Radhika, two arms of Krishna disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and he came back in his Dri Bhuja Muldidara Suhu. <laughs> two hands and holding the foot. Actually, he was trying to manifest the four arms. But he simply could not. It was not possible. Yeah. Why? Because Radhika's brain is, is the extreme limit of Madanakya Mahabhav. And because Krishna is Premadin under the control of love. So different devotees can control Krishna to different degrees due to the degree of their love. But because Radhika's brain is Paramahan, the, the highest level of brain. So uh, her control over Sri Krishna is absolute. He's, he is completely Prem Adin, under the control of Radhika. And so his arms disappeared, and it was a surprise to himself that he could not maintain that sarup in her presence. So, everyone was thinking this deity was a deity of Alanath, a deity of Lord Narayan, worshipped by the Alwas. But Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotako said no. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to come here, he was coming here in the mood of Radharani, searching for Krishna who was hidden from the Rasalila. And Krishna is present here in the forearm form of Alanas. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here, then his two arms disappeared and Mahaprabhu saw Alanas as Tri Bhuja Muridara, two-handed Krishna playing the flute. Mm -hmm. So Bhaktisthan Thakur said, this place, the Brahmagiri, is none different from Paitagam, which is just... Uh, close to Chanda Sarova and Viraj Govardhan, where this pastime happened in Braj Manda. So, in this way, there are many occasions in the life of Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sutaku where his profound realization and his position as Param Rasik Rupanuga Vaishnava was manifest. Once there was a religious assembly, Dharma Sabha, and one devotee there was speaking about Sri Krishna's Leela. And he said, in the Rasalila, Sri Krishna disappeared from all Braj Gopis, taking Radharani with him. And then Sri Krishna served Radhika. But then when the other Gopis were approaching, Krishna could hear them coming. So Krishna said to Radhika, let's go further into the forest. Radhika said, oh, na parayam chalitam. I am unable to walk. If you want to go somewhere, you can carry me. And then Sri Krishna said, yes, you should sit on my shoulder. And then she looked and Krishna disappeared. 
And when Krishna abandoned her, it was such an extreme shock that Radhika cried out, Ha Nata Ramana Prishta Kwasi Kwasi Mahabuja Dasya Stay Kripanayame Sakke Dashaya Sandhidhim Oh my Nath, oh my Ramana Without you I will die, come back See, it was as if she heard Krishna said, but you're, all, you're about to die if I come back, it's too late. Said, no, Kwasi Kwasi Mahabuja, you have Mahabuj powerful arms, and just the touch of your arms will be like a medicine which will completely revive me, like Amrita. Then Krishna said, I am the son of a prince, why did you tell me to carry you around? So she said, Sakke Darshaya Sanhidin, oh, you served me in such a way like a friend, that I became very so close to you, I thought I could speak to you in this way. Please forgive me. So, saying these words, Radharani fainted and fell to the ground. So this devotee was speaking this kata, and when Bhaktisthana Sutako heard it, he began to shake, and he could not tolerate it. And he stood up and interrupted the kata, he said, Don't say, Hanata Ramana Prasta, rather you should say, this is that first verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam. But now Prabhupada Bhakti Thakur is quoting a verse from Gita Govinda where Radhika was late for Rasalila and without her permission Krishna just began the Rasalila with the other gopis. So then when Radhika arrived, she saw Krishna in the distance. And Krishna saw her. And she turned around and disappeared into the forest. So then Krishna thought, oh, now I'm in big trouble. And even though so many beautiful gopis were all trying to serve him and please him, he was just looking through them as if they were not there. And he got up. And he wandered from kunj to kunj on the bank of Jamuna, various places where they had met before where he thought she might be waiting for him, but he could not find her anywhere. So finally, feeling great remorse, great regret, Sri Krishna sat down and began to weep and lament. Vishashada Madhava, Madhav, the husband of the goddess of fortune, the most fortunate person, is lamenting how unfortunate he is. So Prabhupada Bhakti Sanskrit said, say this verse. <laughs> Why? Because he is the incarnation of Nayana Mani Manjri. Those who are the dasis of Shimati Radhika, Sri Krishna Virahi Radhika Radasha Amito Sahite Nare. When Radhika is in separation, then I cannot tolerate it. Jugala Milan Sukhe the Karan Jivete Charite Pari. For the sake of bringing Radha Krishna together, I can give up my life thousands of times. So those who with the Palya Dasis, the maid servants of Shimati Radhika, they cannot tolerate to hear that Radhika is in separation because of Krishna's misdeeds. So he said, don't say that. Better to say that Krishna is in separation for his misdeeds. Mm -hmm. So, our Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, since the time when 1905 to 1915 when he did his Nam Bhajan from the age of 31 to 41. At that time, since that time, he used to recite the Vilap Kosamanjali of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Every day. He memorized it by heart. No need to read. He memorized the whole poem of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. And he used to recite it every day. Devi Dukha Kula Sagarodari Duyamanam Api Durgatam Janam Tam Kripa Prabhala Naukhad Bhutam Prabhaya Swapada Panka Jalayam Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was absorbed in his the Siddhavish, his identity as a Rati Manjari, maidservant of Simati Radhika, and very close and intimate associate of Rupa Manji. And she was serving Shimati Radhika, decorating her lotus feet with luck. But then, suddenly his samadhi broke. And when? 
as to being in the joy of Radhika's direct service. Raghunath Das Goswami found himself, ah, I am here in this world, in this male sadak form. Then it was extremely painful, extremely shocking. And he is crying, Devi Dukha Kula Sagar Odari. Oh, Devi. Oh, Radhika. Devi means Devi Kohi Jyotamana Paramasundari Kimva Krishna Puja Krita Vasati Nagari. That person who is so radiant, effulgent, and supremely beautiful, whose entire body is a place of Krishna's puja, worship, and Krishna's playground, that is Devi. Oh, Devi, Dukha Kula Sagar Odari. I am drowning in an endless ocean of suffering and misery. Oh Devi, please place me in the boat of your mercy. And by this boat of your mercy, rescue me from this endless ocean of suffering and bring me to your lotus feet. And crying like this, then again he would go in Siddhavesh and see that he's that she is there, Ratimanji is there, and serving, massaging the lotus feet of Shivati Radhika. After some time, this party would again disappear and he was thrown into the great pain of separation. Tvadda lokala kalahi gangsa eva mitham janam Oh Radhika, I have been bitten by the poisonous snake of not seeing you. Please, that lack with which I was painting your lotus feet is the only Ayurvedic medicine that is the antidote for this poison of separation, of not seeing you. So he is not speaking poetically. He's feeling his whole body is the burning from the poison of separation. And only if he can become again in Avesh and be as Rattimanjari, painting the lotus feet of Radhika, then he the, can be cured of that virulent, the effect of that virulent poison. So just as Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was going in and out of external consciousness, internal consciousness, external consciousness, and burning in the fire of separation. So Prabhupada Bhaktisna Sutaku was in that same mood. When he was doing his vow to chant a billion names, he was like a mad person. Sometimes in his roof, there was a hole in the roof, it was raining, water was coming through, he just took an umbrella. Hare Krishna. <laughs> his Guru Dev, Srila Goki Shodas Bhavati Maharaj, commented, he was watching how he was doing bhajan. And he said uh, that I can see the renunciation of Das Goswami in my Prabhu. So Srila Gokisho Das Bhavati Maharaj used to call his one and only disciple my Prabhu. And it was his experience that he was seeing that unearthly supernatural detachment from the world that was present in Raghunath Das Goswami. Vairagya yog bhakti rasam prayatna apayanam manmanu bitsamandam this level of detachment is actually not possible. It is not a yogic feat of tapasya, but rather it is the anubhav, it is the side effect of the very profound attachment to the service of the lotus feet of Sri Gandharvika Shimati Radhika. So Prabhupada Bhaktisthana Sutakur, in his uh, final days, he was saying, I spent so much time cutting jungles, but I wanted to give you this. So now you should know that time is very short. Life is very short. So we have not come to this world to be construction workers, only building temples. We have not come to this world to do welfare work, building schools and hospitals, all of these things. But rather, carrying the shoes of the pure devotees upon our heads, we are initiates into the mantra, Kirtaniya Sadahari. Don't neglect the uh, seven-tongued fire of Harinam Sankirtan. Always keep the Kirtan going. And keep within your heart, 
only one aim and objective. Adadanas tanam danteir idam yachai puna puna simadrupa padam bojo dulisham janma janmani. As Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Pad has prayed, I take a straw between my teeth and I bow down again and again. And with great pain, I am begging that lifetime after lifetime, I want nothing other than to be a speck of dust at the lotus feet of Sila Rupa Goswami Pad. He said, all of you should be ready to spend gallons of blood to nourish the spiritual body of even one soul in this world. And if you will go on performing Harinam Sankirtan every day throughout your life and preaching and internally taking full shelter of the Ashray Tattva, Shri Vig Ashray Vigraha, that is Sri Guru and Simati Radhika, then at the end of your life you will experience the supreme <coughs> goal of all existence, Radha Das. And shortly after that, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Sahasur Thakur, he told uh, Srila Bhakti Raksha Chidar Dev Goswami Maharaj to sing Srila Nartam Das Thakur's Si Rupa Manjari Pada, Sai Mora Sampada, Sai Mora Bhajana Pujan, Sai Mora Pranadhana, Sai Mora Abharana, Sai Mora Jivana Jivan. The lotus feet of Rupa Manjari, they are my only treasure. They are my only ornament. They are my pran. They are my ocean of rasa. They are my japa, my tapa and my brata. They are the goal of all my the dharma and karma. <coughs> oh, when will that day come? When I will <coughs> behold the beautiful lotus feet of Rupa Manjari. Then the lotus of my heart will be blossoming day and night. Oh, Rupa Manjari. I am bitten by the snake of separation from you, and due to this I have been suffering for a long, long time. Alas, alas, O Rupa Goswami, please bestow your mercy upon me. And being absorbed in this bhav, then at 5.30, about 5.30 in the morning, then Prabhupada Bhaktisthasa Thakur, in the form of Naina Mani Manjari, entered into the Nishanta Leela of Radha and Krishna. Mm -hmm. Nitya Lila Parvishta Om Mishnu Pada Ishtodara Sata Sishi Mad Bhakti Siddhanta Saritakur Jagad Gushla Prabhupada Ki Jai Tadiya Thirava Titi Ma Mahosava Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Preman Saru Sadhu Prabhupada disappeared in Calcutta. There were some devotees who were there. Kunj Bihari Prabhu wanted to take the divine form of Prabhupada to the mm, Smashan Ghat. But our Vinod Brahmachari Param Gurudev Bhakti Pragyan Keshu Goswami Maharaj, he stood up and forbade anyone. No, no one should take him to the Smashan Ghat. <coughs> Knowing the heart of Srila Prabhupada. We know Brahmachari arranged to bring Srila Prabhupada with Kirtan back to Mayapur. <coughs> and in that exact place <coughs> where Prabhupada from 1905 to 1915 he performed his Nam Bhajan and all his nectar and realization had the pastimes of his realizations. That was his Asiddhastan. This is the great desire of the Vaishnavas that they'll be in Samadhi in that place where they had the pastime of attaining their Siddhi. Mm -hmm. So Srila Bhakti Pragya and Kesha Maharaj, knowing this, brought Srila Prabhupada there and himself with his own hands he dug the hole and put Srila Prabhupada in Samadhi and he said that we, you cannot do a cremation because Srila Prabhupada mm -hmm. has not passed away, he is not dead. He's in Maha Samadhi and in meditation serving the lotus feet of Sri Gandavika Giridhari. And now he's eternally present here in the Sri Chaitanya Mat and very mercifully present to give guidance to all of us forever. Mm -hmm.
So we should know that the samadhis of the great acharyas, they are places where we can go, where we can pray and receive the inspiration. Just like our Prabhupada, Sri A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he did his bhajan, were at the samadhi of Srila Rupa Goswami in Vrindavan and was inspired by him to come to the West and spread the message of Chaitanya Mahu everywhere. Yeah. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai! Oh, everyone, I'm